Okay, we are back in Chapter 6 in Echo with Ivy. And remember, they've just moved and they met um, the wards. And so Ivy's excited because she may um, have, have a friend that lives pretty close to them. Okay, so now we're going to find out a little bit more about them and why, why they're there. Why couldn't I go with Mama to the school? Ivy asked Papa the next morning as they walked through the orange grove. Ivy Maria, we have been over this, said Papa. But why must I go with you to the owner's house? You said the daughters are not even there for me to meet. Isn't it more important I meet my new teacher? Mama is only leaving your papers at the office and confirming you may start on Monday. The students and teachers are in class, and after, Mama has errands, and we don't know how long that will take. I wanted you with me so I could explain some things. Ivy took the harmonica from Fernando's jacket and began to play My Country Tis of Thee. Before she finished, she lowered it and said, Papa, do you think my new teacher will be as lovely as Miss Delgado? Miss Delgado was like a queen who lived in a castle. We were her subjects, and every day she opened a treasure box and gave us jewels. Papa frowned at her. Ivy, enough with your pretending. You are getting too old for it, and you interrupted me. Did you not hear me say I needed to explain some things to you? Now put away your toy. Ivy felt the sting of his words as she slipped the harmonica back into a pocket. Sorry, Papa. What did you want to explain? Papa kept walking until they emerged from the trees, and then he swept his arm toward a dilapidated house. Dilapidated means run down. The lawn had turned brown from lack of water. The plants in the flower beds had shriveled, and the ground was thick with weeds. Lumber had been nailed across the front door and all the windows. The wood porch and railing that wrapped around the front and one side of the house were caked with dust and dirt. Papa, what happened? Do you remember last spring when all of the Japanese children left your school in Fresno? Ivy nodded. Miss Delgado said they had to live in a special camp because we are at war with Japan. One day her classroom was full and every desk taken. The next, the class was half its size. That is what happened to the owner and his family, said Papa. The Yamamotos are Japanese. The government calls them enemies of the United States. There are hundreds of farms, such as this in California, where the owners have been confined in a camp. If the bills are not paid each month, the owners will lose everything. That is why I am here. You are here to save their farm? asked Ivy. Papa nodded. I will run it for Mr. Yamamoto while he is away. I will take care of the bills, pay myself a salary, and save the profits for him. In return, when the war is over... He will keep me on as supervisor and deed me the house and the small piece of land it sits on. To own. Papa said the words as if he were praying. Own. That meant staying and not leaving, even after a year. And there were things to stay for. A school with an orchestra, her own room, Fernando coming home to a house, maybe even friends. In a few weeks, Mr. Yamamoto's son, Kenneth, will be allowed to bring me the legal papers, said Papa. If he likes me and how I am caring for the property, we will sign an agreement that guarantees hope for both of our families. So you see, our future is tied to their future. If the son can come here from the Japanese camp, why can't they all come? Papa shook his head. Kenneth is not in the camp. He is an officer in the United States Marines, a translator. He will have only a short leave to take care of his father's business. His parents and sisters are enemies, but he is not? Papa shook his head. I do not see how any of them could be enemies. The farm has been in the family for 40 years. Mr. Yamamoto fought for the United States in World War I. Then why were they sent away? Those are good questions, Ivy. But for some questions, there are no good answers. He walked toward the backyard. Ivy followed, her mind filling with more questions. What if the other Japanese farmers can't find someone like you to run their farms? The bank will sell them for much less than they are worth, and there are many people who want to buy up the land. Mr. Ward, the neighbor, is one of the eager ones. He has bought three farms in the area already. He made an offer to Mr. Yamamoto, but was refused. Okay, now, 
Let me explain a little bit. During World War II, because the Japanese bombed us and we were at war with not just Germany but Japan, they considered the Japanese, even if they were born here, so Japanese Americans were rounded up from all over the United States and put in relocation camps, not like a camp with a swimming pool and stuff, but a place where they had to live in a small room. They couldn't take hardly any of, the, any of their belongings. They had one little suitcase, and they were kept there so that we could be sure that they weren't spies. Um, so your next question in the papers that I sent you is what happened to the Yamamoto's and how are the futures of both families tied together? So why is it important that, how are they tied together? So what is Ivy's family doing for the Yamamoto's? Okay. And then the next question says, why were the Japanese seen as enemies and what impact did that have on their businesses? So I told you they were seen as enemies because we were fighting the Japanese. And then when they were gone and they were taken away from their homes, their homes could be sold right out from under them because they weren't taking care of them. Okay? So it had a big impact on them. It was a... It's kind of... I don't know. We'll talk about this in a minute. But, but it is a part of our history that I think in a lot of ways we've forgotten that we've done that to people, but but it was um, harmful to many Japanese Americans that had considered themselves real Americans. Like they said, Mr. Yamamoto served in World War I, and now he was being treated as an enemy, and his son is, is um, a Marine in the war, and, and they're in a camp. Kind of interesting. Um... Was that what Mr. Ward was hiding? That he wanted the Yamamoto farm but couldn't have it? Was he angry at Papa for coming to save it? They wandered to the side of the house where there had once been a large vegetable garden. Wire trellises held up weathered tomato vines with rotted fruit. Behind the garden sat a wooden shed with a window. From inside his inside jacket pocket, Papa pulled the envelope Guillermo had sent tilting it so a large ring with a dozen keys slid into his hand, along with two smaller rings, each with a single key. Duplicates for the shed and house. He tried different keys in the padlock on the shed until the right one unlocked it. When he pulled it open, one of the hinges fell off. I'll fix it tomorrow, said Papa. Ivy looked inside as Papa took inventory of the shovels, rakes, and hoes. Large, wide-brimmed straw hats hung from nails, a wood box held packets of seeds, but it was the child-sized wheelbarrow that tugged at Ivy's heart. It was filled with little trowels and sun hats and tiny clay pots, each one nesting inside another. She imagined the two girls following their father, planting seedlings in the garden, plants they might never see grow. When Papa finished surveying the tools, he shut the shed as best he could and they headed toward the house. Ivy gasped when they reached the back door. Someone had painted the words, Japs, yellow enemies. Okay, so yellow was in reference to their skin color. And these were derogatory or bad, demeaning, making fun of terms that they used for the Japanese. Papa, that's awful. Papa sucked air through gritted teeth. I do not like these words. Papa, the son's feelings will be hurt if he sees this. He wouldn't be pleased. We should paint over it. I'm glad you feel that way. That's exactly what we should do. We need to look inside the house too, but it will take some time to go through their things. Maybe Mama can do it next week. Look for what? When a house is closed for a long time, it's always a good idea to check for water leaks or rodent nests and to make sure all the windows are shut tight or squirrels or birds can't get in. Papa shook his head at what had been done to the door. Ivy reached up and touched the angry words. Papa... Who would do such a thing? I think there are many. I read in the newspaper that someone set fire to the building that was the Japanese church, and someone broke all the windows of the Japanese laundry. It is a matter of record that those buildings are still owned by Japanese. The same as this farm, people know Mr. Yamamoto did not sell. Ivy worried. Is it safe for you, Papa? Will people be upset with you for working here? I don't think so. 
Farmers are in short supply. Do you know what the government calls us now? Papa stood a little taller. Food soldiers. Not only must we grow food for the country, but for the soldiers too. That is why the government wants families to plant war gardens to lessen the burden on the farmers. During the war, every American is a soldier of one kind or another. The government even has the Japanese Americans in the camps farming the surrounding fields. But Papa, couldn't the Yamamoto's have been food soldiers in their own fields? He sighed but didn't answer. Instead, he pulled a photograph from the envelope and studied it. Ivy leaned closer to get a better look. It was a picture of Mr. Yama, Mr. and Mrs. Yamamoto and their family. They were standing in front of a church. He wore dark rim glasses. She wore a dress with a white lace collar. Kenneth already stood a little taller than his father. The two girls, their hair in short page boy cuts with straight bangs, wore Sunday dresses and Mary Jane shoes. The younger one tilted her head toward her sister, smiling and holding a well-loved doll. Ivy was not sure what enemies looked like, but she could not imagine that they looked like this family. She pointed to the doll. Do you think they let her take it with her? Papa nodded. Probably. They could take what they could hold in their arms, but nothing more. Now it is our job to protect what they left behind until they return. Suddenly, Ivy felt guilty for complaining about packing up to leave Fresno so suddenly. At least she got to come here, to a house they might one day own, when the Yamamoto girls were in a camp with only what they could carry. Ivy followed Papa back the way they had come and stopped in front of one section of the house that was covered ground to eaves with a wooden lattice that had been nailed over sheets of wood. Green vines climbed upward in overgrown confusion, runners dangling from the sides. Ivy frowned. It needs pruning, Papa. He studied the lattice work. I agree, but Mr. Yamamoto asked in his letter that I let it grow and fill in. He is particular, to be sure, but I can tell that he loves his farm. I will do as he asks. With the windows all boarded, the house looked embarrassed and sad. Papa, like a dog when it has been shamed, Yes, said Papa. The house is very sad. They walked down the drive toward a three-sided wood structure near the road. A rickety bench leaned against the back wall and a warped table sat in front. Is this a bus stop? asked Ivy. Papa shook his head. It is Mrs. Yamamoto's stand. She sold oranges in the spring and vegetables in the summer. While Papa inspected it, Ivy took the harmonica from her pocket and played Skip to my Lou. She looked back at the house and in her mind saw a different place in a different time. A freshly painted home with lace curtains in the windows, a tidy green lawn where a picnic was laid out on an old quilt, and the Yamamoto girls holding hands and dancing in a circle with the doll. Skip, skip, skip to my loo, skip to my loo, my darling. They danced until they grew dizzy and collapsed on the grass, giddy and giggling. Ivy lowered the harmonica, knowing the Yamamoto girls would have been her friends if they hadn't been sent away. Okay, so I want you to think about this for just a moment, about the idea of taking people based on, based on their nationality. Okay, so if you're Japanese, you got sent. Didn't matter. Didn't matter if they found proof that you were spying or not. If, they, if you were Japanese and your family had been here for 40 or 50 years, it still didn't matter. You got sent to live in this one room with your family and you worked all day during the day but none of it was yours you weren't paid you had to leave everything behind you had barbed wire, barbed wire fences surrounding the compound where you lived with everybody else that you didn't know you didn't know them just because they all have the same skin color you did but we were fighting a war we d couldn't have spies telling telling enemies where where things were or where they could bomb or communicating our movements. So you give me your opinion. And I've always been surprised at all of the different, different opinions about this. Do you think that the government was right in sending the Japanese to these camps um, during the war? Um, do you think part of it was right and part of it was wrong? Um, do you think it was wrong? Tell me why. Give me a good sentence explaining your thoughts. Say, I think it was wrong because, or I think it was right because. 
Um, give me some reasons. And you can agree or disagree with people um, in the comments. If you disagree, make sure you're kind and not uh, demeaning or mean to anyone else. Um, and if you agree, tell me why or give an additional reason. Don't just say, I agree with so-and-so. you got to give me a little bit more than that. Okay? All right. We'll find out more.